Hi, this is Conrad, your curator of Viking culture. We're at Apelier today, and this is The Viking Life. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Apelia 2 episode. The Apelia 1 episode was just the pregame. Now it's game time, so strap in and let's get going. So just before we start, the hat, I didn't explain that on the first one. I did tell you that we uh, found these before we went, but I'm gonna tell you, this was a lifesaver. This kept me so warm, so I thought I needed to justify the purchase, not only from uh, wearing it there, but wearing it in the videos. So I hope you don't mind. You're going to see it a lot throughout the Apelia episode. So I hope you're excited to see what the fuss is all about. So let's dive in. So a little explanation about what you're going to see. I'm going to narrate this as we go through it so you know what you're looking at and why it's you know important, you know, just a little background. Uh, but what you're seeing here is the procession and uh, they are walking up the street with the flame. Now it hasn't been distributed to the geyser squad yet, but they're going to um, send out their lead guy uh, as you're seeing it right here. They're all gonna uh, light up as part of the geyser squads. Now there are 50 geyser squads made up of 20 members each. Uh, so there's about a thousand people participating in this event and these guys uh, light up uh, they're about four foot long uh, torches uh, the ends are soaked with diesel fuel and you can see now here uh, everybody's uh, got their torch lit um, they're lining the streets and uh, they're they're singing they're um, you know chanting uh, they're excited to get this going, and uh, it's pretty exciting. You smell a lot of diesel fuel, a lot of smoke. Uh, at this point, it's pretty windy, so you're going to see a lot of sparks flying off of the torches. So then they start to parade, and um, some of them are in their squads. Some of them are off by themselves. Uh, it's not, you know, formed up uh, accurately, I guess, at this point, but they're just kind of parading back and forth around this main area where the light up happened and then they're going to uh, parade through the town of Leerwick uh, on the Shetland Islands and then they're going to end up at the Norse Galley. So uh, a few things you're going to see, the light up which you just saw and then you're gonna, we're going to show you different parts of the parade and then the Norse Galley Pyre which is the grand finale. Uh, as I told you, the Norse Galley is the star of the show, and you will be seeing her a couple times throughout this video. Uh, she is absolutely stunning. Excited to bring her to you. So, right now, just a lot of parading. Now, the thing about the 
geyser squads is, and, and I originally thought everybody was dressed like a Viking. On the contrary, only the the Jarl squad is dressed like Vikings. And I think there were about 50 of those. And I'm going to show you a team photo at the end of this video. But everybody else uh, comes dressed at, together. They're, all the squads are dressed as groups. There will be a third video where you learn why they are dressed like this. But the rule is you cannot dress like anybody else. You have to be unique. Uh, and just so we're not missing it here, uh, this is the band. They've got the drums, they've got bagpipes. They're all dressed in Scottish gear. Uh, the music is fantastic as you're hearing it here in the background. So um, it, it is creating an atmosphere. Uh, and it's pretty exciting because it's dark. There's good music. People are excited. They're parading through the town. There's fire. Uh, it's it's extremely uh, moving, and uh, you can absolutely see, as you will see when they start to light the the uh, Norse galley. Powerful, emotional. Um, you can see why uh, people could get a little excited and start doing some wild and crazy things. But to this point, everything has been really well behaved. Uh, this is a really neat scene because we're now we've moved a little bit and we're seeing uh, we're on the opposite side of where they are parading and you can kind of see them moving in two different directions. Those are those are homes on the other side, uh, two-story homes. Now they are made of stone, but you can imagine with all this fire every year, um, they broke every fire code I've ever heard of since you know man's been around. So. The fact that this has been grandfathered in since 1751 means that uh, they're not changing it for anybody. But what a beautiful scene this is. The torches going back and forth uh, across the streets and down the avenues uh, just makes for a great scene. Um, and here comes the Norse galley, right? So you kind of kind of see the beard, you see the teeth, uh, you see them parading. Now these guys in front, they, they were a little bit unique because I did not see them in the pregame parade. And they looked like Norsemen, like authentic Norsemen. Um, and uh, they don't have all of the gear that the Jarl squad has, but uh, they're pretty, pretty decked out themselves. So there's the Norse galley, there's the beard waving in the wind. Uh, you've got a couple guys on top of the galley. I'm not sure what their names are called. So if any of you know out there, um, you know, feel free to share. But uh, now the parade and the processional go behind them. And you've got everybody with the torches following in behind them. You can see it's a little windy because the torches aren't well lit you'll see a few of the torches go by and they're just kind of smoldering but uh, not to worry uh, it does improve a little bit but this is neat because at this point we were just feet away uh, from the geysers and the geyser squad and we got a great look at them it is a little dark because uh, i didn't have a light on the top of my camera so but in a few uh, different areas, you really get to see everybody pretty well. But uh, I was going back to the geyser squads. Individually, uh, as squads, they can't dress like anybody else for the last four years. And everything has to be unique and they can't dress like each other. So uh, they gotta be creative. And uh, I think they have to probably submit their ideas to the Apelia committee where they get approved and your group gets approved. So here we are and the Norse galley is in the field and people are lined up on all four sides of this. Um, they're preparing the Norse galley to be burned. You can kind of see uh, someone in the center kind of walking across the ship, uh, just preparing it, getting things ready uh, for the pyre. The Norse galley uh, is the most significant part of all of this because they spend over a year and a half preparing the galley to, you know, to be just spectacular and really to be the center of the show. And if you look at the previous video, 
you just see the amount of detail that they put into it. There, there really no expense has been spared in making it a beautiful uh, Viking longship. They really uh, do a great job. So now, now you're seeing the Jarl squad is in the field. They are starting to circle the Norse galley. And this is a preparation in where they're going to start the, the ceremony. Um, but all of the geyser squads are now, you see them kind of at the bottom of the screen there. They're coming in and uh, they've got their, their torches lit and they're there coming around the outside of the field. And the geyser squad now is uh, starting to circle the Norse galley. And the geyser squads uh, will follow them uh, and just continue to circle. You can see the wind picking up a little bit, starting to blow some uh, sparks around. This is nothing. Wait a little longer. And you did get a little glimpse on the intro of what you're about to see, um, but this is in greater detail. Uh, now you see some of the geyser squads starting to circle, and you kind of, if you can see, you see some of the Jarl squad circling back. So they've got you know a couple different directions going. Obviously, well choreographed. They, obviously practice this because uh, when you're carrying the flame uh, it's showtime you will hear uh, people chanting people uh, uh, singing songs uh, it's just a great event you'll also hear them saying Augie 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 oi 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 you probably heard that before uh, just a little fun fact that was first coined in Cornwall Wales uh, in 1970, they believe it was a soccer match. So that's where that comes from. But uh, you even hear a little uh, child scream out, Augie, 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 and then the rest of the crowd responds, Oi, Oi, Oi. So everybody's into it. And here again, it's dark, it's cold, it's windy. You've got torches, you're gonna have flames. Uh, there are emotions. The atmosphere is just electric right now. Uh, and you just can't take your eyes off what's happening because the big finale is coming and everybody's excited. At this point, at this point, we were about four rows deep and we were probably about 10 feet up from the actual field. I have, oh, about an eight foot long selfie stick and I had it looking over the top of everybody, which is why you don't see many people in front of us. Uh, so that kind of worked out uh, well for me. That way we got a really clear shot. But you can start to see now there are probably six deep around the Norse galley and uh, they're continuing to circle. And once everybody is on the field, they will um, do some cheers, they will uh, sing a song, and then they will uh, start the grand finale. Now you see it's getting a little deeper. There's quite a few of the geyser squads out there. Uh, everybody's got their torches. I can imagine it was actually nice and warm where we were standing because you started to you know feel some of those flames walking by and you know it took a little of the chill out of the air. Um, so it wasn't bad. You know we were we were in a crowd and there were probably I don't know six to eight deep. Uh, along this fence that we were standing on. So, you know, with all the body heat, uh, it wasn't too bad.
you can still see one of the commanders standing on the boat. When he comes off, that's when the things are going to get uh, a little interesting. So at this point, you've got the uh, cheers going on. Uh, they're, they're basically celebrating and uh, giving congratulations to the different groups for participating. So you see some of that happening. It's pretty great. Three cheers for the guys in the Now the commander is coming off the ship. And any second, you should see the first torch getting thrown into the North Gap. Lots of sparks, lots of smoke. Oh, there we go. That was the first one. Now they're pitching them in. And things are going to light up a little bit here. There you go. There you start to see some flames. Look at the sparks flying off. And now it's starting to pick up a little steam, get a little hot and heavy. And there are a thousand people with torches. Look at the sparks. Amazing. It was fantastic. Can you imagine this being done in any other country? And here's the interesting thing. This is the thing. I didn't see fire department anywhere. I didn't see police anywhere. They, everybody was so well behaved. So now you're starting to see the sparks and the flames really starting to pick up. Everybody's starting to move back because it's now it's getting a little warm. Even those of us in the crowd, we were probably a good 60 yards away. Uh, it was, you could feel it a little bit. And now a lot of the torches are in. There's still a few left, but uh, now we're, we're getting to the exciting part, the apex. And now the flames are really reaching some great heights. Just think of all that diesel fuel and wood that's fueling that fire. And the wind, you can see the wind blowing. Uh, that's really kicking those flames up. Sparks flying everywhere.
And now we've got a serious Viking pyre. Now this symbolizes the slain warrior and his funeral pyre and being sent to Valhalla. Can you think of a more majestic way to reach the afterlife? I think we all agree that this is the way to go. The Vikings knew how to celebrate death. Wow, look at the sparks. Everywhere. This is fantastic. And it's really licking up. You now see that the sail is gone. Uh, we were watching for the top flag to go, which it took a little while. And then the beard of the dragon for the dragon ship. Uh, those were some of the things we were looking for, but this burns for quite a while. What was really interesting is the next day, there wasn't a sign that any of this had happened. There wasn't a cup. There wasn't a piece of trash. There wasn't any soot or ashes or the leftover boat. It was cleaned up the next morning. Uh, really got to hand it to the city and the crews that respect their island, their town. And even though they get to do this, uh, that they don't leave a mess for somebody else and it doesn't hang around for days. You couldn't even smell anything. It's just amazing. Now you see the fire uh, starting to reach the neck of the longship and the rain starts to come in. So now we're really starting to get some weather. So we've got wind, we've got rain, we've got fire. It's all happening here. And for those of you who have made it to the end of the video, I do have a nice surprise for you. You will get to see a team photo of the Jarl squad. Uh, so here they are the Jarl squad for their team photo. They're proud. This is a great event for them. I hope you agree with me that this is the biggest Viking party on the planet. So here we are at the end of the episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like and subscribe. And this is the Uphelia 2 of the Viking Planet.